I want to preach from this subject today. It's not a Christmas message. It's up to you. It's up to you. Father, preach me today. May I preach that which becomes sound doctrine and gospel. May I do no damage to your word. And Lord, save the soul that's near as hell today. In Jesus' name, amen. It's up to you. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Allow me to take ownership of this phrase. It says, it's up to me. Amen. It's my call. It's your call. This message today that the Lord has placed upon my heart to share with you shows the role that individual responsibility for righteousness plays in our relationship with God and with life in general. And I want you to let the word individual, the phrase individual responsibility sink in deep because this message will single every one of us out. He speaks to Israel as a collective, as a nation. But he has something powerful to say to the individuals. Amen. God bless you, Elder Chase. He's going to football practice now. Thank God that he has a mind to come to church and be here as long as he can. And on those Sundays when you see him slip out like that, uh, NC State practice. Praise the Lord. I'm just glad he come in and get as much of the service in that he can. He probably could have had a little more preaching had they not given me all these announcements. <laughs> Today's message will free some to be all that they can be. Because it will show you that you are not under a generational curse. In fact, all who were born before the book of, uh, after, all who were born after the book of Ezekiel was written, actually have never been under a generational curse. Never. As popular as the generational curse message uh, is and was, and one time it was just a fad. I'm not a faddish preacher. I don't, I don't jump on bandwagons. I preach what I preach. Preach what God gives me. Amen. If 10, of the, if t uh, t uh, ten more preachers in the city is keying on it, let them do it. But I seek the Lord, uh, not what's popular. So consequently, we never preached here. We never joined that generational curse fad because from day one, we knew better. This message will show that the sin punish inheritance can be aborted and has been. Thereby clearing the way for every one of us in here to make the most of our lives. You can be somebody if you want to be. You can make some wonderful things happen in your life if you want to. Amen. We'll talk a little bit about the role that nature and nurture plays in our role in our lives and development because it plays a role. But it doesn't play the role that we give it credit for. 
Amen. So on one hand, someone today is going to be free to be all that God would have them be. On the other hand, others will find this message to be a depressing message because this message will remove the excuse that you've had for years. Some are still blaming mom and dad. Although you are grown with gray hair showing yourself and it's still mom and dad's fault. You won't say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. We we blame mom and dad. We blame blame our grandparents, great grandparents, and others for our current failures. Some of us are still blaming slavery. You know we were once slaves. You weren't. You were never a slave. Your mother was never a slave. And your mother's mother was never a slave. You know we were in chains. You've never been in chains unless you've been on the chain gang. And you've been to jail, but you were never in chains. Hmm. We, don't have the, we don't have a legitimate claim to that. Most of us in here... Um, uh, overwhelming majority, especially all, all of the young people, you were born in a world where you've always had the right to vote. You've always had access to any counter. You never saw, a, uh, unless you saw it in a history book, uh, a sign up that says whites only or blacks only. You've never marched in protest of anything uh, unless you, you know, joined in that hands up, don't shoot thing which was proven uh, by Obama's own attorney general to not have ever had even, have even taken place. It's a big hoax formed on the American people. According to Attorney General Eric Holder, his investigation showed that Brown, uh, the young man that was shot, never said to the police officer, hands up, don't shoot. That was made up. And the man who made it up recanted it. And yet people took to the streets. Took to the streets. Before they found out for sure that what they were taking to the streets for was worthwhile. You got to be careful when you jump on these bandwagons. A number of pastors had a hoodie service. After LeBron James... And uh, uh, Miami Heat decided to put the hood on after the Trayvon Martin uh, situation. A young man lost his life. It was tragic. And uh, churches begin to have, I'm talking about bandwagon now, hooded services. The next year, LeBron left Miami. So much for that. You have to be careful who you follow, and what bandwagon you jump on, and, and, and how we're quick to blame someone else. The two most blamed entities are, and I don't know which order they're in, the devil, well, three, the devil, society, and everyone else. Praise the Lord. Y'all, are you following me? Amen. See, I'm not, I am the way that I am, we say, because my ancestors did thus and so, or because they didn't do thus and so. It's not my fault. It's their fault that I'm the way that I am. It's not my fault that I am the person that I am, that I've squandered my opportunities. It's my mother's fault that I squandered uh, life's opportunities or my grandmother's or, or that church that I went to 
or that person who did me wrong 40 years ago. Today, the Lord is taking that excuse away. Amen. There's no cover in that. You, you know you have to rise above. Are y'all praying for me? Things like that. Because you can't live your life under, the shad, under that shadow. And you can't do this. Do that to your loved ones. Grown man standing there tiring over his mother saying to her, I'm a loser because you didn't raise me right. You've been at your mother's house 40 years. No, you're a loser because you're a loser. <laughs> now, the, now the good news is you can change it. That's the good news. That's good, that's good news, see. The Bible says there's hope for a tree. And if it is hewed down, it can sprout again. The good news is you can change it, but you can't change it with that mindset. <laughs> Hallelujah. We love to blame white people for all our ills. It's always someone else's fault. I stopped to get gas yesterday after I left the clinic. And uh, when my, we preached and worked and was in a very celebratory mood, but my words were few because I was trying to recuperate. And... Uh, uh, and I wasn't talking loud, and sometimes you can sound a certain way when you're talking low. And, uh, and so a young man stopped, and he complimented me on my automobile. I said, thank you, brother. And then he says, you know, man, me and my friend here, we, we, if you could just give us. I said, brother, stop right there. Stop right there. The bottle in your hand gives you away. Now, I, I ain't been saved so long that I don't know what a liquor bottle look like. So, in, in a plastic bag. Now, if you had money to, and, and, I mean, in a, in a paper, brown bag, paper bag. Uh, now, if you got money where well, you can brown bag it. And if, you, if you're still hungry, how about taking the liquor back? They told, well, no, every, everybody won't say no. Uh, uh, everybody ought to. You want to help him? Let the world tell him no. Because the world don't owe him. Let the world tell him no until he stops drinking. Now, if you stop drinking, we can help you. But if you're going to take your money and buy alcohol, you won't take my money and buy anything. It's his call. And I was where I could help him. It wouldn't have hurt me to help him. And if you know me, you know that I'm quick to do things like that. But had I given him money, I would have hurt him. Well, somebody's going to help me. It's his, his, his becoming a man now is the responsibility of somebody, everyone else, society. Who is society? When the last time you've seen society? Never met the man. Next time you beat him, bring him to my office. I want to talk to society. You, you can't touch him. You, it's abstract. It's meaningless. It's a cheap cop-out. It's like saying bad things about a dead person. You have to worry, you have to worry about a rebuttal. <laughs> society. Never... Talks back. That's why it's so easy to blame him. This message today, if you're still watching, it shows that each person is fully responsible before God for his or her actions. And 
are not punished for the sins of others. God holds me responsible for what I do. God holds you responsible for what you do. So adult offspring, stop blaming your parents. And parents, stop feeling guilty. Let that go. Well, what could I have done? Maybe I could have done more. Well, you, you could always do more. The issue is also, you could have done less. Amen. Have you been the best father that you can be? No, I've been the best father that I've been. But I haven't been the worst father. You can always do better. You can always do worse. I don't know of anybody who's had a perfect father but Jesus. I don't know of anybody who's had a perfect mother. But there is such a thing as being raised right. Then it is your responsibility to take what you have been taught and apply it. Praise the Lord. I told you we probably won't shout today, but... Let, let's look at this. The prophet Ezekiel gives a proverb that showed that Israel had indeed taken on the characteristics of uh, her surrounding environment. Matter of fact, her surrounding heathen environment. If you look at chapter 16 and verse 44, it says, Behold, everyone that useth Proverbs shall use this proverb against thee, saying, as is the mother, so is her daughter. Ezekiel 16 and 44. As is the mother, so is the daughter. Now, when Israel heard this Proverb. This proverb was a description of what Israel had allowed to happen to them. They had allowed the heathen world that surrounded them to influence them. Look at how we've allowed the world to influence us. If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. I'd hammer in the evening all over this land. I'd hammer out hip hop. Oh, look at how it has adversely affected us. It is fashionable. For us to walk around with our pants hanging off our rear ends. That's black fashion. That's, that's now considered cool. It's a swag. It's the world. With no shame. No shame. No shame. Oh, I'm making some of you comfortable. Uncomfortable. Pull your pants up. That, that ain't nothing. You don't want to fight about that. Pull them up. In no society in the world has that been acceptable behavior. No way. The Irish have never accepted it. The English, the, the, the uh, Asians, the Japanese, the Chinese, the Russians, you name it. But us, with us, it's a fashion statement. It's so bad that in every Hollywood production, the black, you can tell the black guy, he's the one who calls everybody an MF. He's the one in the movie, or she, the, the, the foul mouth person. Right. See, we've been typecast. We've been typecast as being the most vicious, the most vulgar, the most inarticulate. Oh, my. We, and, and the thing about it is it's one thing for some rich Jewish person who owns 
use the movie theater to portray us in a mo in a role like that, it's a much it's much different for us to act it out and do the things ourselves. We won't shout today. Amen. We won't shout today. See, already, see, when we, when we hear this kind of talk, see, well, let me ease out. But we need to hear this. If we're going to survive as a people, if we're going to be respected as a people, if we're going to make it as a people, we've got to do better, and we've got to stop blaming everybody else. The proverb was one, Ezekiel said it, it will be spoken against you as the mother, so as the children. That is, you've absorbed the environment around you. Do you know as believers, we're not called to be sponges? As believers, we're called to be rocks. As believers, we're not called to reflect the world. As believers, we're called to reflect Christ's light. As believers, we're called to be separate. We're not called to blend in. We're not called to be like them. We're called to show them the way. And more and more today, we see the saints and the church reflecting more, behaving more like the world than the world behaving like the church. This negative proverb that was spoken against uh, Israel was, however, not to be received uh, as a permanent, theological, unalterable assessment of their current condition. They accepted it. Well, we're like the world and there is nothing we can do about it. This proverb was a description of how Israel had allowed uh, to happen, of what Israel had allowed to happen to them. It was not a sentencing. However, that's how they took it. Now we see in our text, God uh, using Ezekiel to piggyback on the proverb of chapter 16, in chapter 18, he says, the word of the Lord came to me saying, look at this, what mean ye? Uh, and you can tell right there, just by the language, it's offensive. What do you mean? See, anytime, anytime you start to send us off with that, an argument is on. What do you mean coming in here that late? What do you mean? God says, what do you mean uh, saying, using this proverb uh, throughout the whole land of Israel? The fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Let me explain this proverb. That is, they claim that their teeth were dull that their teeth were so dull that they couldn't cut food, that their teeth were diseased and cavity filled, that their teeth were bad because they inherited bad teeth from their parents. So our parents ate sour grapes and the grapes made their teeth bad so therefore our teeth are bad see and you can't blame us for having bad teeth praise the Lord you can't blame us for that because the reason our teeth are bad is because our parents had bad teeth. And there's nothing for us to do about our bad teeth. We can't change our bad teeth because our parents had bad teeth. 
Oh my, are you with me? It's a matter of inheritance. They reason that the thing that have come upon them is because of what their parents did. Now, from a natural standpoint, uh, one can inherit gum disease. Amen. And one can inherit calcium deficiencies that can lend itself to bad teeth. You can inherit uh, or have a greater propensity for developing a condition that could lead to oral problems. Praise the Lord. Tooth decay. Bad breath. You name it. You can inherit things that can make these things more likely or create a propensity but the inheritance is not a guarantee that you will have these conditions. For there are steps that can be taken. See, that can prevent uh, your mouth from becoming a yuck mouth because your parents' mouth was a yuck mouth. But you got to do something. Go on and elbow somebody and tell them you got to do something. See, see, see. Now, now, you, you can, you can, you can mimic your parents' bad behavior. Mom brushes her teeth once a month, or, or, or once a day. He didn't say anything, did he? <laughs> Ain't much difference. And I, uh, uh, my, 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 my mom didn't, didn't floss. Uh, I, we don't floss either. And we don't, we don't go to the dentist until it's time to get our teeth, a tooth pulled. And, uh, we don't have regular checkups and never done anything like that. Now, if they didn't and you don't, it makes it much more likely that their sour grapes will put your teeth on edge, but it's not because of inheritance. It's because of nurture. Wasn't that, wasn't that God did it? Is that all of y'all practice the same behavior? Praise the Lord. We have a tremendous weight problem in the family. But we, I was raised in a house, someone may say, where uh, our main course, the, the, uh, the uh, appetizer was starch. The main course was starch. The dessert was starch. Starch in the morning, starch in noonday, and starch at night. Then get up late at night and get another starch meal. Sugar, 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 starch, sugar. No dessert, no, no vegetables, starch, sugar. Sugar, starch, okay? Now, we're gonna see what that does to mama. But if the child follows the same behavior, then it will look like that it was an inheritance because it's a family trait. When it's not an inheritance, it's nurture. I'm trying to preach to you. It is the act of picking up bad habits. Past from one generation, preach wouldn't, to the other. I mean, Israel had gotten so bad about it that when they repented of their sins, 
They blame their parents. Lamentations chapter 5 and verse 7 says, Our fathers have sinned and are not, and we bore their iniquities. They're saying our fathers have sinned and our fathers are dead. And now we are being punished for what our fathers did. But they weren't being punished uh, for what their fathers did. They were, they were being punished for what they did. They did not own their role in the punishment. They did not accept any responsibility. That's Lamentation 5 and, 5 and 7. They did not accept any responsibility for, for the punishment that came their way. There are people who accept no responsibility for their current situation. I'm in the hole because won't nobody help me. Well, everybody else is saying, why don't you help yourself? Give us something to work with. Nobody feels sorry for you. There come a time, this is hard preaching, there come a time, there comes a time when a person has to decide, I'm going for it. Yes, sir. Now, to be fair, to be fair, I want to be fair to the text. Exodus, the Decalogue does say this. Exodus 20 and 5 says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Also Deuteronomy 5 and 9 says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, talking about false gods, nor serve them, idolatry. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me. God said to the fathers, Look, you're hurting your children. You hurt down to the third and fourth generations removed. It is true that uh, and, and obvious that parents model for their children. Regrettably, children frequently practices practice the same sinful practice as their parents. They also suffer the same consequences and punishment for those actions. What the father does, what the father does affects his children. But righteousness and wickedness are not, hear me today, this is the crux of what I want to say. What fathers do, what dad does, what the father does affects the children. But righteousness and wickedness are not hereditary. You can't, no matter how righteous you are, praise the Lord, bequeath righteousness to your child. You can be the most righteous Father, mother, grandfather, grandparents, the most righteous person to ever live. But righteousness cannot be bequeathed to the children. Conversely, you can be the most wicked dad or parent ever. But the wickedness that is in you cannot uh, be bequeathed. It cannot, you, your child cannot inherit that wickedness from you. That's good news. Because see, not everybody here comes from a good family. Not everybody's mom was a first lady, or dad was a bishop, or father was a congressman, or, or a senator. Uh, some of us are just here. And uh, some of us don't talk much about our pedigree because, truth be told, there's not much to be told. But it does not mean 
How you got here is not indicative of what you can become now that you are here. Oh my. It is really, really, this is good preaching. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching better than you're saying amen. Amen. What the prophet wanted them to see is that each person, each person's lives, each person lives, excuse me, and dies according to his or her own actions. It's on you. It's on me. Hallelujah. The prophet Jeremiah prophesied, he actually prophesied the cessation of the proverb. Jeremiah said this in Jeremiah 31, 29 through 30. He said, in those days, in those days, they shall say no more. The fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. And every man that eateth sour grapes, his teeth shall be set on edge. God said, we're changing this. You ain't going to blame everybody else. Amen. God says, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. So you might as well get over that anger with your parents. I'm still upset because she was never there for me. Let that go. Because God has let it go. Amen. Because the Lord is not weighing your actions on what she did or didn't do 30 years ago. The Lord is weighing your actions on what you are doing today. And see, the thing about holding stuff against people, you, 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 you see you got your eyes fixed on them, but you don't see what that's doing to you. So you can make yourself a monster while hating someone else for being a monster. The preacher was in the bathroom. He had his robe on and he saw some young folk in the car at church while church was going on and while trying to look through the window to see what the kids were doing in the car, uh, the preacher looked down and his robe had got in the commode. See, you got to watch your own robe. See, because why are you trying to see what somebody else is doing? Your role might get in, praise the Lord, uh, the commode. Uh, say amen. John, I'm going to have to preach hard and get out of here because I don't think they like this today. But I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to set you free so you can be what God would have you to be and then not carry guilt that you ought not to carry. And then not, not make excuses that you ought not to make. Everybody ought to be glad. Yes. The book of Ezekiel was written between 593 and 551 B.C. While he was living in Babylon. Ezekiel died in Babylon. He was 30 years old and spent the rest of his life there. And uh, he was a part of Jehoiakim's deportation, the, the second group. And when he wrote this book, that means that since 593, to 571 B.C. Since then, no one has been under a generational curse. All that money you gave in those generational curse services to get your generational curse removed, you got had. Oh, we're not going to listen to pastor because pastor don't know what he's talking about. Ever since this time, the text says you, uh, that you won't have the occasion to use this proverb anymore. Anymore. Now you ought to be glad, praise the Lord, that you're not under a generational curse. Praise the Lord. Amen. See, these little fads, they catch on because of our sin, sinful behavior. Who wouldn't want to... Uh, claim a generational curse if at the crux of the curse it means that I'm not responsible for my misbehavior I'm not responsible for my misdeeds my dead daddy is 
my old elderly mother is. Oh yeah, I'm cursed. That's why, that's why I've been acting the fool because of what mom and dad did. Oh yeah, I accept that because it doesn't put any responsibility on me. On me. But you know what? God says, oh no, it's you. I'm looking at you. That, that come a time where you got to break the mold, man. And, and, and it can't take forever either. You, you, can't, you can't take forever getting delivered. It don't take forever to get delivered. It just takes a made up mind. As soon as your mind is made up, the Lord comes in right then and there and sets you free. Nothing is too hard for God. Some of us act like certain ones are a tough uh, nut for God to crack. No one is a tough nut for God to crack. What's, what it is is it just takes people a long time to come around to where they're ready to do right. And I told you before, while people aren't ready to do right, we blame God. Well, the Lord going to save them after a while. When the Lord gets ready, he's going to save them. So their sinful behavior is because God's not ready. The devil is a liar. Mm -mm. And let me say this to someone. You better hurry up and get right because people are going into judgment every day. Amen. See, these things uh, relieve us of our own personal responsibility and for our actions. I call it the old blame it on mom and dad trick. It's always mom's fault. It's always dad's fault. And we act, we acknowledge today both nature, we acknowledge nurture. It plays a role. But the Bible has always held man responsible for his own actions. Genesis 2, 17, God said, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest, thereof thou, shall surely die. Genesis 4 and 7 says, If thou doest well, then thou uh, uh, shall not thou be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Deuteronomy 24, 16 says, The father shall not be put to death for the children. Neither shall the children be put to death for the father. For every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Preach wooden. Second Kings 14 and 6 says, But the children of the murderers he slew not, according unto that which was written in the book of the law of Moses, wherein the Lord commanded, saying, The father shall not be put to death for the children, nor the children put to death for the fathers, but every man shall be put to death for his own sins. All of these scriptures show that a son is not bound to be like his father. And the father is not bound to uh, be held responsible forever for the behavior of the son. You know, when I first got saved, you know, and got into the church of God in Christ and began to see the role, excuse me, that pedigree plays in this church. I felt bad for a minute because my daddy was not a deacon. My daddy was not a pastor. My dad uh, was not a district superintendent. and My dad was not a bishop. My dad was not headed for any general board or anything else. My daddy was a pusher man. My daddy was a real gangster. My daddy didn't leave me a spiritual inheritance. Now don't feel sorry for me now. I love my father. I remember the two times no, uh, uh, that I recall him in my life. Uh, I don't have a sad story. Uh, my father, I think about my father every day. He died in 1974. And here I am in 2018, September of 74. And I still think about it. I can still see in my mind's eye the first time he pulled up with those big muscles and uh, prison tattoos on him, driving in a yellow Camaro. 
with a cigar that long. If I wasn't saved, I'd be a cigar sucker. <laughs> yeah, I would, because my daddy would. And I never, never will forget a man by the name of Phil Jackson. I was walking up the street around, oh my, just a young lad. And uh, he said, boy, do you know who this man is? And I said, no, sir. I, I wanted to say it with my daddy, and, but uh, I was scared. And he said, but I said, no, sir. He said, boy, this is your daddy. When he got out the car, it looked like he went all the way up to the sky. And he spent a day with us. And uh, oh, those biceps. And I'll never forget. And uh, we had pictures one time of me and him and Tom. We were, uh, we were on either side of him. And he had those big arms. And we were standing there. And what a man he was. And our house burned and the pictures burned. But don't feel bad. They're up here. I see them all the time. Oh, my. Then the next time I saw him, the muscles were gone, but he had on a bad suit. Amen. A big hat, driving a long Cadillac. By that time, he had gotten into the, to the drug game. The muscles were gone because, you know, heroin takes your muscles. And uh, uh, the next time I heard from him, I came home one day. It was a beautiful day in school. Never forget the look on my mama's face when I walked in school, home from school that day. Oh, it was a beautiful day. And my mama stood there with a look on her face like I'd never seen before. And my mama said to me, I got something to tell you about your daddy. And I said, well, he's dead, isn't he? And she said, yes, son. Yes, your father is gone. And that was the end of that. But every day, I think about him. But then I got into the church and uh, I saw the role that pedigree plays in the church. And uh, I'm not criticizing. I think it's wonderful. And because uh, you see the role that pedigree plays in the Bible. So this is not a swipe at uh, uh, that. But I'm just showing you something. But I found out well, early. Because when I got saved back in the day, when you, got, when you get saved, you're required to read the Bible. And I read and I stumbled across Ezekiel and I stumbled across where I heard him say the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son I found out that I didn't have to be that kind of person that I could steal under the banner of his name I can still be somebody and I can make the name mean something uh, that it didn't mean when I got it. Oh, and I thank God that that thing set me free. So we find here in the text, the creator speaking. He said, I know that you all have heard about these proverbs. Can I get a witness? And I know that you've been blaming your parents, amen, for your failure. And he said, you can't do that no more. And then the creator stepped on the stage and made a bold declaration. Wasn't nobody qualified to say what he said but him. I heard God, the creator, say, all souls are mine. Word soul, that brother saw you means persons. God said, I own all the people. I made everybody. All souls are mine. I want to tell everybody that you're not beyond God's hands. I want to tell the billionaire, tell Bill Gates and all of them, uh, God is still in charge. Hallelujah. And the God of the Bible will still have the last say because he made the world and everything therein. And sometimes the rich and powerful, they behave as though they're God. They behave as though they're not subject to the same elements as the rest of us. And every now and then, you know what God does? He just let them die. And he lived, he was this and he was that, but he died. That's the Lord's way of showing us that there are no superhumans. Doesn't matter who it is, sooner or later, we're gonna leave here. Good God Almighty. And you know what happens when they die? The world marches on. Things keep going. People keep living because the Lord is still in charge. So the maker of everybody stepped out on the scene and he said, let me set this straight. All souls are mine. The soul of the Father is mine. 
the soul of the son is mine. And let me, let me, let me designate this thing. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Hallelujah. So that's God's way of saying to me, Patrick, you, you have a chance. It doesn't matter what your mama did. Doesn't matter what your daddy did. That if you would just turn to me and don't do like they did, but do what I'm telling you to do, then you will live and you will be blessed of the Lord and highly favored. I challenge you today, when you go home, read the rest of Ezekiel chapter 18. He gives scenarios showing that what if there's a son who had an evil daddy, but the son did right. Guess what will happen to that son? In his righteousness, he shall live. He'll be blessed in the city and he'll be blessed in the field. I won't hold over his head what his daddy did. I'm so glad that God don't hold over my head what my daddy did. I've never sold drugs. I've never been a gangster. I thank God that when I said, Jesus, save me. That when I said, Jesus, set me free. He didn't look at me and say, that's so and so son. But he looked at me and he said, that's my son. And I'll save him. Oh! Somebody give God praise in here. hear some people praise the Lord who didn't necessarily come from a good place you didn't come from a good family you didn't come from good pedigree but when you called him didn't he wash you when you called him didn't he save you and now that you're living right you are blessed in the city you are blessed in the field you are blessed he bless your going he bless your coming you are blessed say yeah yeah Lord need a few people to praise him a baby's birthday party oh lord but ain't it good to know that god loves us all all you got to do is go for it yourself hallelujah i've raised my children the best i could oh lord tell them about the savior and now it's in the ball is in their court. If they serve God, they'll be blessed. If they don't, they won't be blessed. Hallelujah. That ain't on me. That's on them. Can I get a witness? When you go home today, forgive your parents. Tell your mother, I'm sorry. I've been holding things against you. But I realize today that I'm free to be all that God would have me to be. That I'm free. He'll, he'll, he'll touch my mind. He'll take those things away. He'll give me power to be somebody. I just got to go for it. I've decided that I'm not going to have dull teeth. I decided that I'm not going to let the devil mess me up. I may have to break the mold. I may be the first one in the family who don't have dull teeth. But I found out that I don't have to have them. I don't have to be like that. I found out that if 
I just serve the Lord, I can be like Jesus. I found out that even though my daddy smoked marijuana, I ain't got to smoke it. Even though my mama was a whore, I don't have to be one. Even though everybody in my family have been to jail, I can still be somebody. Even though, oh, even though, I was born on the wrong side of tracks. I can work my way up the ladder. Because if God be for me, who can be against me? Yeah, yeah, Lord. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, it's up to you. Yeah. time that I have left I think despite my mistakes I think despite my shortcomings I think I'll make something out of my life I think I'll be somebody I think I'll let God take me and remake me on the wheel go on down to the potter's house and I'm sure I'll show you something. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to be the stereotypical anybody. Praise the Lord. I'm going to be God's man. I'm going to be God's woman. Amen. I squandered a whole lot of time, threw away a lot of good things. But God says, if, I didn't read this part, if the wicked turn from his wickedness and commit righteousness. God said, the wickedness that he have so done, read it when you get home, shall not be mentioned, but in his righteousness shall he live. See, when you turn, oh my God, I, I, I got the clothes, but when you turn, God knows how to just change things. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You, you make that hard turn in following the Lord. You know what God will do? God will bless you so that, that who gets embarrassed for bringing it up is the person who brings up where, where you used to be what you used to do. For them going there, they look like the fool because look at what the Lord have done for you. My God, you living your life, making your claim, saying what the Lord have done and where the Lord has brought you from. Oh, you know how it is. There's always when you go back home, go back home where you live, there's always somebody oh, who always try to bring you all the way back. They're going to reduce you. Oh, you can be the second assistant, president of the men's department, or ordained elder and all that. But when they address you, they're going to try to find some demeaning old nickname or something. And, I, and you're grown, married with children. There's always that person. But when they do that, they make themselves look bad. Mm. They, and then they'll tell you, well, I'm saying this to you so you won't forget where you come from. You ain't, you ain't having no memory problems. They, they're having the problem. One well, is their problem. They have a problem with what God made out of you. They have a problem with how the Lord raised you up. You ought to praise the Lord for God raising you up. And don't even apologize for the Lord blessing you. Somebody ought to shout something in here. Hey! Bless me. So you have to watch these, you have to watch these proverbs. That's not scripture. Well, you know, I tell, I tell somebody, I want you, brother, I want you, brother Corey Terry. I want him to work with me. I want, I want him to work with me. Then you come to me and say, well, you know, 
you might not want to use him. Why? Well, you know, they tell me his uncle or his daddy or his mama did so and so. And you know they say the fruit don't fall too far from the tree. Yeah, doc, that's what they say, but that ain't scripture. That ain't Bible. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, if any man be in Christ, that's Bible. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. That's Bible. You can't hold me back there. You can't hold me where I've come from. Because I came from that. I decided, Brother Keller, that I ain't going to let ancestry or pedigree bind me up. There are people who will write you off because your folk wasn't nothing. Now, hey, I know that. <laughs> All of them. Praise the Lord. I do better than they do. By a, on a bad day. Woo! On a bad day. Because if you serve the Lord, if you serve the Lord, the Lord God of the Bible is the great equalizer. On the other hand, shame on you if you take a good pedigree and blow it. What's wrong with you? Don't you do that. And if you've done it, change. Turn from that wickedness because God gave you a break. Now, there are drawbacks though on both sides. When you come from a good family, the pressure is on you to be good. <laughs> the expectations are there for you to be good. Now, they are reasonable. They're not necessarily fair, but they're reasonable because you come from a good place. You had a good opportunity, good home, good upbringing. So all this good, all that good, right? Good, good, good. Then you ought to be good. How are you going to be bad with that much good? But sometimes coming up and all that good puts pressure on you. And then if you listen to the wrong people, they will cause you to resent. To resent the goodness that God provided. So then you try to become, you try to go out and act like somebody that you're not. All of a sudden you're trying to be a thug. A hoodlum. And you rebel against goodness because you don't want to be in anybody else's shadow. See? You got to know how to handle being blessed. You got to know how to handle if God has given you a godly heritage. You got to know how to handle that by first of all being thankful. Then secondly embracing your heritage. It's a blessing. And no, I told Brother Kenneth Jefferson one day, a uh, long time ago, is Bishop Willard's grandson. Uh, I, 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 know, I don't know of a young man that I respect anymore. I was watching him one day, and I was looking at him from afar. I saw him, but he didn't see me. And, uh, and uh, all the girls were standing around him. Because he was a very handsome young man. He wasn't married at the time. And just, uh, uh, and I watched how... He, with great dignity and respect, handled himself. And I went to him one day and I said to him, let me tell you something. Don't you let anybody talk you out of your heritage. Don't let anybody criticize you or make you feel bad for being Bishop Leroy Jackson Willard's grandson. I said, let me tell you why. So why is that, sir? Everybody would love to be his grandson. Amen. <laughs> Who wouldn't want? <laughs> Everybody would. And the person who's criticizing you want to take your place. So you embrace who you are. Yeah. 
White folk do a better job with this. They ain't perfect, but they do a better job with this than black people. So all of us, we believe that we got to charter our own course, be our own man, make our own way. You still being your own man. You just walking on the road, somebody that paid for you. I, I, hey, one of you remember you that just administrated at the time? I didn't do this, I had it done. I had it done. If then we brought it out to the floor. I didn't do it myself, but look at this. Now, if I had to, if I could only walk on the portion of the floor that I did, I can't come in here. Praise the Lord. If I had to drive on the road that I paid, I couldn't have gotten to church. I just got on the road that someone else paid for me and came on to the house of God. And if God has blessed you for someone else to pave the road, why aren't you driving on it? It doesn't make you less of a man. I tell you what it does. It makes you smart. Amen. Even though there may be pressure, listen, nobody has a life devoid of pressure. No one in life has it made. Even people that you look at and say they have it made. LeBron don't have it made. No, sir. People who earn their living, who, do, who, who make a ton of money, and their job description is criticize LeBron. If he scored 50 points, he should have scored 51. If he made three free throws, he should have made four. That's, their, that's how they get paid. How would you like it uh, if, if you had somebody in your life like that? You actually do, you just don't know it. <laughs> we all have it. Oh, because I, I sure have mine. That's, that's what they do. That's how they get notoriety. You live in their head rent free. I like it. Pastor, I'm praying for you. Well, pray a good one, because I'm a happy man. You got to walk on the road. You are, where's uh, Karis? Where'd she go? She, she's in children church. The children, when they get ready, both of her children brought them to me when they got ready to go to school. So look, you're Williams. You go down there and you be a Williams. You act like the, you act like you you're somebody. I talk to the ones that bring the children to me. I speak blessings. Now you you don't bring them to me. I can't talk to. Them. Well, he didn't say anything to my child. Did you bring the child? <laughs> I don't I don't run any of them down. That's right. Say amen. amen. Speak a word of blessings. Be somebody. Everybody today was a preacher. The word helped me today. I'm, I'm done. The word helped me. It freed me. I ain't got to carry no guilt for what I didn't do. And it freed me, Lord, because I realized I'm not bound to, re to, mistake, to uh, repeat the mistakes of my family. Some of these folk ain't worth visiting. You ought to go and leave the car running when you get out the car. Go in. Hey Amen. Don't you cut the car. So just go in. Yeah, oh, yeah. Just go in. Hey, how y'all doing? Hey, praise the Lord. And just high fiving everybody and going right back and get in your car and go get with somebody with some sense. Because all they're going to try to do is pull you down. All they're going to do is look at how blessed you are and, and, and stop, stop, stop this. Stop trying to look less blessed. So someone who's not blessed will feel better about themselves. No, if God had blessed you, you ought to look like you're blessed. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want them to think I'm trying to flash them. Do you remember when you didn't have it, you were saying then, God, if you just bless me. If you just bless me, Lord, then the Lord bless you, and then you take the blessing and put the put the blessing in the drawer. Then God let a thief come in and steal it, and so it get, it'll get worn. Thief all on television with your blessing. <laughs> oh, amen. That's my ring. Not anymore. Because you are ashamed of the goodness of God. Lord bless you, and you got finally got your nice car. Well, I don't want to drive it to church. I'm scared of what the saints might say. Well, were you afraid of them seeing you get off that bus? On the corner? 
Well, if the Lord had blessed you, you better display God's blessings. Preacher, today, a different kind of message. But I heard something that set me free. And man of God, I want you to pray for me. A weight has been lifted. I'm not bound to my past. And I'm not blaming anyone else. I'm going for it. If I'm talking to you, run to the altar. Right quick. Come this way. I'm going for what God has for me. Glory to God. I'm going for it. Hallelujah. I'm going for it. I'm dropping that stuff. I'm letting that stuff go. Hallelujah. I will not be bound to those things. Glory to God. I got to let them go. Hallelujah. I'm not cursed. And I found out today that I never was. All this time. And seeds. I want you to sow a seed and to get your generational curse removed. Wasn't even a curse. You would listen to a, 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 someone who probably just didn't know. I put it that way. I just be nice. They ought to know. You're going to preach it. Amen. They ought to know at, at a certain point. Now, if you're talking about a baby in Christ, that's different. But they to, I'm talking about a high-powered evangelist they bring in town. Uh, and got to have all the amenities. And then get it wrong. <laughs> oh, bless the Lord. Lift your hands to him on the altar. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. We thank you today. We thank you. For your word. We thank you. That there are many parents in here today today who can breathe a sigh of relief I raised my children I'm not called to raise them twice I did the best that I could and I can't go back and undo anything that was done I can't say what wasn't said and I can't do what wasn't done I can't take back what was said. Oh my. And I can't undo what was done. But I can move on in my life. As a son or a daughter. My parents weren't the best. But that doesn't mean I, can, I can't be the best. I can raise my family. I can show them what I wasn't shown. See, it depends on how you respond. I can make sure they don't feel what I felt. Hallelujah. Or I can go the wrong way and let them experience what I've experienced. No, I'm going to be a different kind of person. I'm going to break the mold in the name of Jesus. I found out today that it's up to me. It's my call. And I've decided to go forward in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you right now. We give you praise and we give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we give you all of the glory and all of the honor. Thank God. Amen. Lift your hands all over the sanctuary and worship the God of the Bible. Ooh, I'm going to be somebody in Christ. And I hear the Holy Spirit saying, I also pray, ask them to forgive. Forgive. Forgive mom and dad. Forgive that aunt, that uncle. Forgive. Forgive them. Let it go. Let it go. Because to hold it is to only, is to bind yourself. And you can't do that. You have too much living left to do. Too many good things to accomplish.
too much good that God wants you to do. We just let it go. In the name of Jesus. You can praise the Lord now. Hallelujah.